We've just been discussing failed leadership in Britain across the pond. Polls indicate that people feel much the same way about their leaders. Just 5% of Americans want Biden and Trump to run in next year's presidential election again. But it remains the most likely outcome. This apparent crisis of leadership brought to mind an interview I did with the legendary singer Harry Belafonte, who's just died at the age of 96. Well, here's Harry singing, of course, his best-known song. Hey! A great singer and a great performer and also a great interviewee. I sat with him uh, at CNN about 10 years ago and he told me about meeting Dr Martin Luther King and what remarkable leader both King was and also Robert F Kennedy, who of course was the brother of, of John Kennedy. And both of them, of course, got assassinated. And he went on to say this about what we lacked in the world today. I think the God, a lot of guys are politically smart. They, they can play the chess game, but they've lost moral compass. And it is the absence of that moral vision and the absence of that moral courage that I think we suffer from. Well, joining me now is Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. So, Vivek, I thought that was a fascinating quote that I found when I look back at my interview with, with the great Harry Belafonte about the lack of moral courage in modern leaders. And that really, I felt, resonated with me because... There's a lack of moral courage in our leaders. It resonates with me, Pierce, too. It's part of why I'm in this race is it's not just a case for stylistic differences to say that, hey, that's just the way to be. I happen to believe that is the way to be, morally courageous. I want to look my son in the eye and say, I want you to grow up to be like him, whoever's in the White House. And I can't have said that in good conscience for a very long time, probably since Ronald Reagan. But I also think it allows you to be more effective because, look, I'm taking our America first agenda further than Donald Trump did. But I'm going to go the distance by not making it so easy for the other side to come after me. And I think you can go further when you're doing it from a place of moral conviction, moral authority and first principles, not just vengeance and grievance. And as the first millennial ever to run for president as a Republican, I think that'll actually hopefully be able to set an example that the next generation of Americans is actually hungry to follow, even though they may not admit it openly. I mean, I've had you on the show a few times, and I love your energy, your dynamism, and the different way that you think about stuff. I think it makes you a very interesting candidate, even if, you know, according to the polls at the moment, you don't have a lot of hope of winning the nomination, but you may well shape the eventual winner. I don't want to, you know, downgrade your chances, but as things stand, it looks that way. There's plenty of time to well, go, though, so we'll see you know, there. I'm, I'm not writing you off. I'm just saying it's going to yeah, be a tough it's, mountain. It's, but it's my, my point really is... But my point really is, when I, right when I see your youth and dynamism and energy, and I compare it with Joe Biden, for example, who is going to be 82 at the next election, which he wants to contest, and then 86 by the end of it, and, you know, people over here think, my God, Really? Joe Biden's going to run again? It looks like he can barely string a sentence together. And it, that his rival may be, according to the polls at the moment, Donald Trump, who himself is heading towards 80. Uh, and again, people across the pond go, well, hey, there must be better candidates in America than two, you know, one octogenarian, one heading that way, a one who's just gotten a criminal indictment, and one who looks like he's senile. Well, I'll say a couple of things. I mean, first of all, I'm about in the polls where Donald Trump was in 2015 True. when he came down the escalators. So I think that I think that there's True. room for this race to mature, and that's why I'm in it. Both Trump and Biden are over twice my age, literally 2x, and Biden by uh, by a margin and then some. But it's not even just an age question, Pierce. I think that you want to see the essence of what's happening with Joe Biden. It's not that his cognitive deficits are a bug. They're a sort of feature actually, because Joe Biden isn't really running for president in this country. In a technical sense, he is, but he's not actually running. It's the managerial class that has propped up President Biden as a sort of front man, as a sort of kind of the Wizard of Oz, sort of a hollowed out husk, a symbol that they're using to advance their agenda. So measured against that, it makes a lot of sense. Him having cognitive deficits is an advantage, much like Senator John Fetterman being able to mentally function effectively in the Senate that lends them to be more easily captured by the managerial class, the true people that run the show in government in the managerial bureaucracy. So it's a little bit more cynical 
than just saying why well, it is, are these old I do guys think, uh, Yeah, up. it is. But I do think the main reason Joe Biden's running again is because he thinks his opponent's going to be Donald Trump and he's pretty certain he can beat him. Now, I don't think he'd feel that way about any other Republican candidate. I mean, you could put it pretty well put anyone else up against Biden and they'd have a better chance. The latest polls, for example, show that Governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, in a matchup against Biden, would beat him nationally and is leading him in, I think, five of the six main uh, potential battleground states. Trump, conversely, in the same poll of polls, is seen to be losing to Biden across the board. So it looks to me like Trump has this weird stranglehold over the Republican Party that the GOP can't shed, and that may drive him to win the nomination. That's why Biden wants him to be the, the nominee, and that's why Biden's running again. How do you stop it as a party? I don't think that he has that stranglehold, Piers. That's what the polls say now, but you got to skate to where the puck is going. Every time pundits make this mistake, anything before that first debate in August is literally irrelevant, as it was in the last cycle in 2015, as it has been in so many cycles. And what I see when I travel rooms across the country, I mean, I'm only eight weeks into this race. I'm already kind of in a fourth position or fifth position in almost all the recent national polls. As somebody who came in as an outsider, what it shows is people in the Republican base are actually hungry. They're hungry for America first as an agenda. But what I tell them is America first does not belong to Donald Trump. He didn't invent it. It doesn't belong to me. It belongs to the people of this country. So this is a long process for a reason. OK, but when, you're standing, that... okay, when you're standing on that podium at that first debate yep. next to Trump, you know what he'll do. He'll come after all of you. Have you thought about a nickname he's going to give you yet? Because he hasn't actually come out with one yet. Well, actually, he's been calling me young Vivek Ramaswamy recently. <laughs> uh, so I'll take that. I am young as you know a presidential what? candidate. I, there's a lot you know, worse a than that coming. But he's going to come yeah. for you. Are you ready for him? I've got a thick skin. You might have seen me on with Don Lemon last week. I, I go did. to the I go to the left. I take a lot of arrows. I don't think those people, I don't think Donald Trump is going to relish being on that debate mm. stage with me. I actually think, Piers, if Ron DeSantis doesn't enter this race, I think Donald Trump will choose not to be on the debate stage with me. Mm. You know, I, if I was in his shoes, I understand that argument, but I personally think that we are a better party than the Democrats, where Joe Biden is being protected by the managerial class in the Democratic Party by saying they won't have the debates. I think the debates are going to be crucial for actually sharpening the iron of the Republican well, Party. Well, I agree. And, and actually, I do think you're going to perform very well at those debates, Vivek, because you debate well with journalists. And like you said, you went on CNN, debated with Don Lemon, and that was the end of his career at CNN. Yeah. So We don't uh, we don't hold back. <laughs> we, don't take, we don't play with kid gloves. Uh, Vivek, and I, I appreciate you always coming on. Either. I, listen, I appreciate you coming on Piers Morgan on Censored. It's always good to catch up with you. It's going to be really interesting to see how it all develops. And you're quite right. When Donald Trump first said he was running in 2015, he had the same poll numbers as you. So stranger things have happened. And uh, I admire your energy, and I wish you good luck. Thank you, Pierce. Appreciate that.